Hey, hello subscriber, this is Navin Reddy from Telescope Learnings and as per the request I am making a socket programming tutorial. So once we have seen the theory of sockets, now let's focus on the practical implementation of that. So for that what we'll do is we'll create a new class here, one for client and one for server and we'll name this class as socket client which belongs to a package which is com dot let's say soc. So this is your client and we'll require a main method here. So we'll say finish. Now we got this main here, right? Now uh, in this client side, what we'll have is we, we require a, a socket which will send a request to the server, right? Every client needs one socket and on the server side, you will be having multiple sockets, right? Because a server will interact with multiple clients and for each client, we require one socket. But as a client, you have only one socket. So we'll require a socket. So what is socket? A uh, socket is a class in Java which belongs to a package java.net so when you uh, press control space here you will get this package there and we'll say socket s equal to new socket now whenever you mention a socket you have to mention two things there the first thing is the ip address of the server and the second thing is the port number because in your server you will be having multiple process and you have to target to a particular process, right? And to how to identify a unique process in the on the server side is using a port number. So the first thing is the IP address and the second will be the port number. So let me create two variables here. We'll say this is as IP, which will be in a string format. And then next will be the port number, which will be in an integer format. So we'll say this is port. Now, what port number we can assign here? So we can assign multiple port numbers. Let's say the port number ranges from zero to 65535 so this is the complete range out of which 0 to 1 0, 0 2 1 no oh, it's 1023 these are reserved port numbers so we can use any port number above 102426535 but the catch is uh, in your machine you'll be having already you'll be having some process or softwares which are using those port numbers example if you in your machine if you are using tomcat so 8080 is already booked. In your machine, if you are using MySQL, 3306 is already booked. So there are lots of port number which are booked, right? How will how would you know that which port number you have to work with? So I'm using a port number which is 999. I have I've got this port number by doing some trial and errors. I've never got the error for this number. There are lots of port numbers available. So this is one of the port number available which is not used by any of the processes in my machine. So time it will work. The IP address of the server, uh, if you are using two machines, uh, one for server, one for client, uh, you need to mention the server port number here, or uh, server IP address here. Uh, since for this example, I'm using the same machine, I will mention it as localhost. Localhost is the IP address of the same machine, right? And in your socket, you have to mention IP and you have to mention the port. Sounds good. But the problem is, there, there might be a chance that this port number is already booked. You don't know, maybe some other process using this so it will throw the exception you need to handle this exception using throws exception you are sending the error on the topmost hierarchy which is JVM you are using throws exception there now once you got the socket uh, so once you once, once you write, it, write, write this line and once, once you execute this the request will go to the server side and then you are connected now once you are connected you will ask use, uh, your server to do something for you now what we'll do is we'll write a string here and the string I'm using is Naveen ready. So what I want, when you send this request, you want the response as first three letters. You don't want all the data, you just want first three letters. So that's what you want your server to do. Again, you can write any code you want. You can add two numbers, you can create a login form, you can create uh, maybe a banking application using circuit programming. That's up to you. That's your logic. But time when we are focusing on the steps you need to follow to connect with the server so you can take anything here so we have a string which is not even ready and you want to send this data to server side now in order to send this data on the server side you need to first create object of output stream writer which will convert your data into a stream format we'll name this object as os we'll say new output stream writer so it is output stream writer and in this output stream writer, you have to mention from where you have you want to send this data. Maybe a socket, maybe a monitor, maybe a printer. So you want to you have to mention from where you want to send this data. 
We need to mention that I want to send this data to the socket. So you can say s dot get output stream, which is the output port of the socket because socket will have two things, the input port and output port. You, when you send data to the server, you need to send this data to the output port of the socket. Now, so using this, we are, we, have, we are converting your data into a stream format and then you are mentioning where to send this data. But to actually send this data, we need to create object of print writer, which is responsible to send your data. We'll say this is out, print writer out equal to new print writer. So we have a print writer here in which you have to mention the output stream object, which is OS. So you can pass this object OS here. So whenever you print something with out, it will send that data to OS and then OS will send that data to the socket output stream. And then using this OS, we can say, oh, with OS, we can say, what's the method we have to use? We can use write. So we can use write or we can use, we can use what? We can use, yeah, we can use write there. So we can use write and we can send this data with str. Now this data, which is str, will be sent to the server and then server will process it. So that's your client, right? We are sending data to the server. Now what to do on the server side? On the server side, we need to create a class which will, which will be, uh, we'll say SOC server. Uh, in this also we require a main method, so we'll say public static okay, void main, uh, not I mean main, in which I have to define a string array. Okay, again you can define array in whatever you want. Uh, so we got a server. On the server side, we require two sockets. One, a bigger socket which will accept all the requests. The second socket will be for one client. So if you have one client, you'll be having one socket. If you have multiple clients, you'll be having multiple sockets. So what we need, we need we require server socket ss equal to new server socket. In this server socket, you have to mention the port number which you will be working on. So from client side, we are sending a request to the server which is uh, to, to the port number 9999 and we need to mention the same port number here. Okay, and then there, there are chances that this port number will be busy, so you have to handle the exception. And we are saying those exception. Now, for every request of this of this client, we need to create one socket object. We'll name the socket as S. Now, when to create this object? Whenever a client sends the request, then only we have to create a socket object, right? Then how would you know that client is sending the request? If your server socket is accepting any request, it will create a socket object. Okay, so we got two class here. One is your client and second is server. The client sends a request. As soon as you get a request on the server side, it will create a new socket for you. Now from this socket, we need to fetch the data. What we'll do is, uh, before this, I will simply print a statement just to notify that server is started. Okay. Uh, then we'll print server is waiting for client request and once you accept the request we'll print client connected okay just to demonstrate how it works so we have these three statements here okay so let me just provide this space there now once you got the request from the client side what we'll do is we'll fetch the data now how to fetch our data there so we can use buffer reader to fetch data. So we'll say buffer reader br equal to new. Uh, I'm assuming that you know what is buffer reader input stream and all those things. Okay, if you don't know this data or this uh, classes, go back to my tutorials. They will you'll find a buffer reader video there, and uh, watch that video first and then come back to this video just to understand it properly. So we have to use a buffer reader in which you have to pass object of input stream reader. So you can see on the client side, when you send data, we are using output stream writer. When you read data, we need to mention input stream reader, in which you have to mention the socket's input stream. You have to mention from where you are getting the input. Okay, we need to import the package also. So we'll say control space, we got the package. Now using this buffer data, we can say br.readline, which will read the data from the client uh, from this client side. We'll save it in a string, which is string str. So we are saying string str equal to br.readline. And then let's uh, 
Okay, let's apply some operation here or let's print it here on the server side just to make sure that something is working. We'll say client data will give a colon and we'll print str. So this is this is what we are doing for a one-way communication. So we are sending data from the client side to the server side. Okay, if, if this works, then we'll move towards the both-way communication. So once again, why we require buffer reader here is because in order to read data from the socket, we need to use buffer reader. Uh, in buffer reader, you have to pass object of input stream reader. And inside input stream reader, you have to pass the socket input stream. Okay, and then using br.readline, we can get the data. So we need to first run the server. So we'll run the server here and we'll say Java application. Okay, so it says server is started. Server is waiting for the client request. Let me run client now. Okay, if I say, okay. So, yeah, so we, it says client connected and you got the data from the client side, which is client data equal to null. Why null? We are sending the name, right? Uh, the thing is, whenever you send data, so your, your network has a buffer size and the buffer size is approximately 5 and 2 bytes and Navin Reddy will not cover all those bytes, right? So we need to forcefully send the data to the server, so we'll say flush. Let's see if that works now. Let's run this code. So is waiting for the client request. Run. You can see we are getting the data from the client side, which is now in ready. So that's that's how you do one-way communication. But we don't want one-way communication. We want two-way communication. We want the data which should go from the server side to the client side. Uh, so how to do that? That we'll see in the next video. So make sure you like the video if you liked it, and do subscribe for further videos. Thank you.